Hi, this is James Pickles from the Fast and Safeti product management team. In a previous video, I explained how to calculate individual risk per annum for a set of worker groups using risk ranking points. One of the benefits of this method is that it's simple to do and doesn't require any populations to be defined in the model. A disadvantage of this method is that the chosen location for the risk ranking point might give an inaccurate estimate and we can see that from this map here so this orange rectangle that you can see this is an area of the site where i expect workers to be present and i've inserted a risk ranking point at the center of this area to give me an estimate of the location specific individual risk but we can see that for this particular area the LSIR, the location specific individual risk, actually varies quite substantially. So we can see at the top right hand corner, the LSIR is greater than 10 to the minus three per year. And down at the bottom left hand corner, the LSIR is down to around 10 to the minus five per year. So it varies from 10 to the minus three to 10 to the minus five. So, um, so choosing the centre of the area is, is a reasonable thing to do, but you have to be aware of the uncertainty associated with that. So in this how-to video, I'm going to explain how to calculate individual risk per annum using PLL, potential loss of life results. And this method gives a much more accurate estimate of LSIR, and subsequently individual risk per annum. So within this method, there's a few extra things you have to do within your study, um, but I don't think it's too onerous. So within your study, you have to define a set of populations for which you will get PLL results. So within this study, I have four buildings defined, building A, B, C, and D, and I have five outside um, populations define A, B, C, D and E. As well as that, I've defined a population category for each of these populations that have been defined. So we can see here building population A, B, C and D and outside population A, B, C, D and E. And then within the population object, you can assign the relevant population category. So within building population A, you can choose the building population A category. And then within building population B, you can assign the building population B category and so on. And the benefit of doing that is that when you produce the PLL results, you will be provided with a breakdown of PLL into each of those population categories and then you can use those values to get a much better estimate of LSIR for the population uh, area and then you can use that much better estimate of LSIR to calculate individual risk per annum. So this model has, uh, has been run, the calculations have been before been performed so then from the risk gallery, I can choose the category PLL report. And then within this report, we have the total PLL. And then if we expand this, we get a breakdown of this total PLL into each of the categories. So we have one column for each category and we have the PLL estimate for that category. So here's the PLL for building population A Here's the PLL for building population B and so on. And then we can export these numbers to Excel and perform some external calculations within Excel. And that's what I've done within this uh, spreadsheet here. I've extracted the PLL estimates for each of the populations. And then within this uh, orange table, I've also made a note of the number of people within, e within each population. So 
there's five people within building A, eight people in building B, six people in building C, and so on. And then LSIR is equal to the PLL divided by the number of people within the population. So you can see this formula here is equal to the PLL divided by the number of people in the population. So, so within row six, I have an estimate of LSIR for each individual population. And this estimate is a much more accurate assessment than if you'd used the risk ranking points. And then within the blue tables, I have a calculation of individual risk per annum for different worker groups. So within this study, I've uh, defined uh, some maintenance workers and some operations workers. So individual risk per annum is equal to LSIR multiplied by exposure. And by exposure, we mean the proportion of the year that the individual is present within the specified location. Because LSIR is the individual risk on the basis that the individual is present 24 hours per day, 365 days per year. But obviously, in practice, um, the maintenance workers and the operations workers in this example um, they're going they're not going to be present in in on the site for 24 hours a day 365 days per year so we actually need to multiply the LSIR by the exposure and that's what I've done within this calculation here you can see that individual risk per annum is equal to LSIR multiplied by the proportion of the year that the individual is present in each of the specified locations. So here it's the number of hours per day divided by 24 hours and then the number of days per year, in this case 182, divided by 365. So this uh, fraction in brackets represents the proportion of the year that the individual is present in building A. And then that proportion is multiplied by the LSIR. So you can repeat that individual risk per annum calculation for each of the different areas or populations. And then you can sum all of those individual risk per annum values together to give the total individual risk per annum for the worker group. So for the maintenance workers, the individual risk per annum is estimated to be 1.78 times 10 to the minus 5. For the operations workers, it's estimated to be 1 times 10 to the minus 5. On this separate worksheet um, was, uh, was where I calculated the individual risk per annum using the previous method of using the risk ranking points. And we can see that the estimates are, are slightly different. Using the PLL, in this example, the estimates are actually slightly lower than using the risk ranking points. Um, but obviously it will depend on the individual risk um, contour profile for the site. The point is that using PLL gives a much more accurate um, method of estimating individual risk per annum. So I hope all of that makes sense. Thank you for listening. And if you have any questions or would like to get in touch, please email digital at dnvgl.com.